This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And while we're all caught up with the amazing power and capabilities of Apple's new hardware with the M1 chip, it means nothing unless you have some great software to take advantage of it. And with macOS Big Sur, there are a ton of great apps you can run even if you don't have any of these new M1 Macs. So for this video, I wanted to go over some of my favorite apps for macOS Big Sur and also focus on some of the newer iPhone and iPad apps you can only find on systems running on the M1 chip. Okay, one of the first apps I want to recommend is actually an app that comes with every Mac for free, and that is GarageBand. GarageBand gets a nice new update for Big Sur, and it's seriously such an amazing app for audio that you can use for so many different things, like podcasting, sound effects, copyright-free music tracks, multi-track editing, and support for virtual instruments. GarageBand offers so many different features and abilities, it's almost hard to believe that it's a free application. I mostly use it for simple podcast editing, and you can do things like normalize volumes with limiters and compressors, EQ voices with simple presets, or if you know what you're doing, you can customize the equalization yourself. I think one of my favorite features with GarageBand is Apple's giant library of Apple Loops. This is a really fun system to play around with, even if you have zero musical ability or experience like myself. These are all drag and drop tracks that you can place on these tracks, rearrange them or do slight edits to them, and of course loop them to make simple background beats or a full on musical score. I use this method to actually make the intro song to my podcast Gadgetcast, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to hear it. GarageBand is a ton of fun, and even if you have zero music experience, go play around with it for 30 minutes, and I guarantee you'll be hooked. There's a lot of great photo editing programs out there. The ones you're probably most familiar with are programs like Adobe's Photoshop and Lightroom, and although these apps are great and industry standards, they run on a costly monthly subscription fee. And they're not even optimized yet to fully take advantage of the M1 processor if you're on one of these newer Macs. Don't fret though, because I have two amazing alternatives that not only run great on macOS Big Sur, but have complete and full support for Apple's M1 chip. The first is called Affinity Photo. Think of Affinity Photo as a direct competitor to Adobe's Photoshop, but unlike Photoshop, it doesn't have a monthly subscription cost tied to it. Affinity Photo is just available for $50. You just pay once, there's no subscription tied to it. I bought it a few years back and still haven't paid a cent more and have received constant software updates to enhance this program. Affinity Photo basically has most of the same tools that Photoshop has with unlimited layers, raw editing, text tool, selection brushes, clone brushes, and retouching tools, as well as batch processing, focus stacking, panorama stacking, digital painting, and it even works with existing PSD Photoshop files, so you can easily move over from your existing Photoshop workflow. My favorite thing about Affinity Photo is that it just embraces Apple's core technologies like Metal, so it's completely optimized for Macs and runs beautifully on Intel machines or these new M1 Macs, and often features the latest upgrades from software updates like Mac OS Big Sur. Affinity Photo even makes the touch bar useful with a really great way to instantly resize selection brushes for precise selection as you edit. Another great photo editing app that's optimized for the Mac is Pixelmator Pro. Just like Affinity Photo, you buy it once, and I really like Pixelmator Pro for its easy to use filters and effects for editing photos. However, where Pixelmator really shines is its use of machine learning. That's something Apple now even dedicates a specific space for on its new M1 chips. Pixelmator has some really easy to use ML tools for automatically grading your photos, so if you're a beginner, you can get some really really nice results at just the click of a button. By far my favorite use of this machine learning feature is what Pixelmator calls super resolution. Super resolution can take a low resolution picture and through machine learning, increase the resolution of the photo. It works like magic and it's actually a tool I use all the time when I'm putting older photos in my videos or when I'm trying to enhance elements in my thumbnails. As you can imagine though, installing all of these new apps or if you're trying to make room for a Mac OS Big Sur install, 
That can be a pain, especially if you have a Mac with limited storage. If that sounds like you, you need to check out our sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one package to clean up your Mac and make it run just like new. In one click, Clean My Mac X will instantly scan your Mac and check for unused system junk, which was a huge lifesaver for me recently when I was trying to free up space on my Mac, as Mac OS can store hundreds of gigabytes worth of purgeable disk space that can't be manually removed on its own. Furthermore, Clean My Mac X can also find hidden apps and folders, and it features an advanced anti-malware protection that protects your Mac in real time and can remove malware, adware, viruses, keyloggers, data password miners, and undetectable apps and extensions, so you can make sure your Mac is private and secure. Clean My Mac X is also notarized directly by Apple, so you know you can trust it. Best of all, you can try a free demo of Clean My Mac X so you can safely try all the tools before you decide to keep it. And once you do, you can purchase an annual subscription for $40, which is less than $4 a month to keep your Mac protected and make sure it always runs like new. So be sure to check out the link in the description to download Clean My Mac X. And thank you so much to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. I think all of us use some sort of notes app. So this next recommendation should be great for a lot of you. and that is is Bear Notes. It's a simple note-taking app with an elegant design, and it's one of the best-looking note-taking apps out there. On top of that, it's excellent for organizing your notes simply by using hashtags. And it has publishing capabilities because it supports Markdown and exports to a wide array of formats. It's also ready for Big Sur with updates to icon styles as well as an extensive range of themes updated for Big Sur's design. Bear also supports the new widget design within macOS Big Sur so you can keep all of your important notes ready to open at a moment's notice. All right, we covered some apps that will work on any Mac running macOS Big Sur, but what about new iPhone and iPad apps that use the M1 chip? That's right, if you have one of these latest Macs, you can actually run a selection of iOS and iPad apps. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these apps just don't work great on Mac OS. They're meant for a touchscreen and different form factors. However, even though that's usually the case, there are a few apps that I think are worth checking out. One of those apps you should check out is Apollo. Apollo is a Reddit client that is built to look like if Apple made a Reddit app. On iOS and iPad, Apollo looks really great and even looks pretty good running on Mac OS, unlike a lot of other iPhone and iPad apps. Unlike a lot of these other iPhone and iPad apps, Apollo also supports resizing windows and having multiple windows. It also runs so much better to me than the browser version of Reddit, which constantly slows down, especially if you visit subreddits that are heavily image-based. Apollo is free to check out, but does have a pro version that unlocks some additional features. Another app you should check out is actually a full-featured video editing app for the iPhone and iPad, LumaFusion. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a Final Cut Pro user, but you have to realize that Final Cut Pro is a $300 program. So even though it's amazing and obviously runs really well on Big Sur and these M1 chips, it's still a really high barrier to entry. LumaFusion is just $30 and supports a bunch of features that make it well worth the price point. In fact, I know quite a few people who are iPad users that are really interested in these new M1 Macs. So if you already bought LumaFusion on the iPad, it will run without any additional purchases on the Mac as well. And you can make the jump over pretty easily if you've already been video editing with LumaFusion on your iPad. In fact, they just had a huge update that added HDR support for 10-bit processing and a bunch of other features. Overall, for an iPad app, this runs incredibly well on Mac OS and even supports keyboard shortcuts. Mouse controls do work, but you have to think of it as more of a virtual touchscreen rather than a Mac OS interface as clicking to move the timeline doesn't work and requires you to click and drag. It can be a little tricky at first, but after a little while, I got the hang of the interface pretty quickly. All right, everyone, and those are some of the apps that I think you should check out on Mac OS Big Sur and ones that are optimized for the new M1 Max. If you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also, don't forget to check out our sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.